Hello. Um, we are the team of Jabba Shatter and First Aid Bots, better known as Salt of the Earth. My name is Matt, and this is Dave. So you guys have been talked at quite a lot today, lots of information about trends on food. So we're sort of the relief act, a bit more fun, a bit more drinks. So we are going to be making a few drinks for you guys today, and not talking too much, but sort of giving you an insight into how we create cocktails. So the Shrub and Shutter was, made, was uh, launched in September 2014, uh, and then the first day box was launched in, you know, I guess, January of this year, 2016. Uh, both of them have been awarded lots of, different, lots of different things from different people from Time Out to Bar Chick and so on. But most recently, we had uh, a first five-star review from uh, Time Out for first day box and the 13th best bar in London, supposedly. I don't know who makes all these rankings up, but we're pretty happy about it. So um, we are also from Salt the Earth a consultancy. So we make, make drinks, make menus, make different PR events with bars, uh, PR agencies, different brands around Europe. So highlights we've done are for like Warner and Edwards uh, gin. It's quite a known, well-known small batch gin. Uh, we've done their whole cocktails for their website. We work with Ballantine's uh, whiskey, which is quite small in this country, but it's huge in Asia. So we've done a massive agency thing for them, as well as loads of small, smaller bars around the country. As I'm talking, there'll be lovely photos oh, of myself here already, um, where we will be just showing a few photos of what we have done. We have probably about a thousand on stock, but this is just some of our favorites. So the Shrub and Shutter is all about shrubs. Um, it, a shrub is a drinking vinegar. It's quite well known now, but two and a half years ago, if I said what a shrub was, people would be shocked to hear that there was vinegar going into their cocktail. People are starting to come around to the idea, especially if you're health conscious, because you can now get different sort of styles of shrubs, even in Waitrose today. Um, the first day box, sorry, back to the shrubs actually, we're going to be tasting uh, one of them, which I believe is going around now, is a celeriac and... Uh, and parsnip shrub. So this goes into our cocktail, the Naughty Piglet, um, which is a restaurant actually in Brixton. So our menu is based around South London and different events in there. So this is a note to one of our favorite restaurants. Uh, it adds a really vegetal, sort of earthy undertone to the drink. When it, If we tried it without the shrub, you'd have a completely different drink. So do come down and try it. The first day box, though, is inspired, inspired list based around healthy drinks and unhealthy drinks, loosely. So doctor's orders and against doctor's orders. So what this means is more super fruits or things your doctor's telling you to have more of. So honey instead of sugar, um, healthier options. And when you go, he says, stop having cigarettes, stop having coffee so much, stop having so much butter. That's the other side, the unhealthier version. But both are obviously have alcohol in them, so they're always going to be delicious if you're ready for a cocktail. Um, we opened then uh, late earlier this summer uh, a bar called The Blinder, which is in the back of First Aid Box, which you might have already seen a photo of, which was, it's a bit dingier, um, and it's based around uh, the TV show, Peaky Blinders. So Birmingham, late, sorry, like post-World War, World War I, and obviously a lot of dark spirits, a lot of stirred classics. So as you can see, we have an eclectic mix of what drinks we make, from healthy things to weird classics, where we have loads of photos with fried ackee and saltfish fritters on top of them. Um, but the problem we have is trying to figure out what is on trend. Now the answer to that, we feel, is actually making an experience rather it being nostalgic or exciting, shock, um, interaction, but above all, it has to be tasty. So we're here to talk about trends, and yes, we try to be ahead of the trend, but most of our drinks come from an innovation in a different way. Sure, we use new brands, uh, products such as new vermouths, new meads, which we're gonna be showing you, showcasing in a bit, uh, but we just try and do a drink in a different way or a, or a different angle. Trends for us come and go, and we have, do have a look at them, and we try and interact with them, but customer senses is the most important thing. Uh, cocktail experiences where people will want to go talk to their friends about things. That's what we feel is on trend. So now Dave and I are going to start making some drinks for you guys. Um, I'm going to be making a drink called The Hunter, 
and Dave is going to be making a drink called Does a Bear Shit in the Woods? <laughs> so for, I was going to talk through a bit more about the products as well and how, why we're using them, because they are actually sort of trying to be on trend a bit more. So Woodford Rye here is actually new last year, at the end of last year. So rye whiskey is a sort of a new thing that's coming onto the market a bit more. Uh, this is a 53% rye. So for people who don't know bourbon or rye, effectively, for a bourbon, you need to have 51% corn. And this is 53% rye, so it's a rye whiskey. Lots of the ryes this in, in the, on the market right now is about 95%, really heavy in rye. But this bit is a bit softer. Uh, and effectively, there was a, a thing that happened about 12 years ago in America where everyone started thought, thinking, oh, rye might take off. And the head distiller of Woodford effectively went to the, uh, the money and went, we need to start making a rye whiskey. And they told him to go away. Unfortunately, Chris is a very determined man, and he went and did it anyway. They spent millions without anybody actually knowing, and just barreled loads of rye whiskey. And then, that was 12 years ago. Then about two years ago, the whole marketing just went, oh, we need to get on this rye trend. And there was Chris, ready to save the day. So he'd already done it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, next, we're going to be having our mead. So this is a mead honey wine. Uh, it's new this year, it launched in 2015. Uh, it's a very strange thing. A guy who graduated from Cambridge uh, with a science degree decided he might as well just start making some mead, a proper modern day Friars tuck. So it's effectively a dry version of mead, what you would know from back in the day. So it can be used as a vermouth substitute. So Effectively, it's starting to get a bit more interesting about what people can use as a slightly different taste um, changer to a cocktail. Um, so what we're starting to do here is make a old fashioned, pretty much. So then it's called the Hunter, so it's based around hunting in the woods. So we have mead, it's a very manly thing to have, it's a strong whiskey. And then this is birch sap, but birch sap syrup. So we've just reduced it down and added some sugar. So hunting in the woods, around the trees, we thought it was quite... Then for many different uh, drinks, which are classics, you will have Angus or Bitters. This is uh, usually a yellow bottle top, which you'll see in every pub in the country, gathering dust. Uh, but it is actually used quite a lot in cocktail bars. Just a few dashes of this. And then on to something called these droplets, which are new to us this year, really. Well, actually last year, I guess. Um, mental, pretty much. These are non-alcoholic versions of those bitters I described, but loads of different flavors, from honey to lavender to ginger. Uh, we're using honey blossom and oak smoke here. And when I say droplets, I really mean drops, because if you put a big squirt of it, that's all you're tasting. So I'm just going to do a few drops of the oak smoke here, and the honey as well. The guys who make these are from a bar called Dry Martini in Barcelona. And I think they keep it top secret how they actually make it. So I'm pretty sure it's actually just magic, but it tastes really nice. So to give this a little stir, and whilst I'm, I'm stirring this, what Dave has been doing is a twist on a classic gin martini. So this is with St. George's Gin, which is an American gin from California. Uh, this is where I've seen quite a lot of this now from America coming over a bit more uh, spirits based rather than craft beers, just whiskey. So this is a heavily based around, um, it's called terroir gin, so heavily based around pine and sort of earthy flavours. It's a very different style of gin that you would never have over here in the UK. Then also, he's added, he's added in Belsar Dry, which is a, it's actually very big. It's taken the, uh, taken the vermouth well by storm. It is a German vermouth, which is, uh, usually everyone thinks of vermouth as an Italian sort of thing. Not these guys. And they're doing the dry, a rosé, a red, and a white. And so the bartenders can sort of pick and choose which one they want to be using. And so we've gone for a nice dry one here. And then also, uh, Aquavit, which is over here, which is a bit of a strange product, somewhere between Flame of Vodka and Taken Gin from Sweden. Um, heavily caraway, heavily dill, it's still 38%, it's not a cure, 
but effectively means he's making quite a boozy gin martini. It's not bad. So our hunter here is pretty sort of nicely served up here. And we're actually serving it with some reindeer, because that's what you're hunting when you're the huntsman. Uh, and then also just for added effect to make sure that everyone knows that we're trying to make it quite hunter-based. You know, you need to have, if you're shooting guns, you need to have a bang. So we'll just have some sparklers going on here. What's that going on? Hope there's no smoke alarms. We've been cooking all day, so it should be all right. But yeah, sparklers. It's a bit more of an effect when you're sat at your table, not in front of 200 people who can't really see from the back, but <laughs> that's all right. Yes. Brilliant. So I can make my drink a bit quicker than Dave. Oh, um, that's good. We did, we did, we did plan this, but uh, so yeah, now Dave is just serving this, serving into our drink there. Uh, yeah, it's fine. So what we've served up here as well is our smoked salmon. So we get this from our, our, our supplier called uh, Pissed Fish. And they pretty much can smoke and cure salmon however we want. We've done things from like uh, a margarita smoked salmon to pancake and maple. Uh, and this one is actually gin and dill. So very nicely matching with this cocktail. So we also have some reindeer cut up here. And, you know, we'd like you guys to come up and try some. Sorry, just to the front, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys, in the back again. It's going to be okay. But yes, guys, so these are our first two drinks. So this is Does a Bear Shit in the Woods and the Huntsman. So we're going to make another two drinks for you guys. Uh, what we're going to be making now are some shaken drinks and also based around the first aid box a bit more. So those first two drinks are actually served at the Shrub and Shutter for, well, pretty much all of December now. And these are going to be from our menu already at first aid box. So we have a different kind of serve at First Aid Box, as you might be able to see here. We have our Perspex here, which is uh, covered in doctor's quiet. pamphlets, because that's the theme we're trying to go for. Um, we're going to be making two different style of drinks. So Dave's going to be making a long tequila drink, and I'm going to be making a short gin drink. So my drink is called uh, the Brotwell Park Bramble, and Dave's is called the Dovetail Margarita. So. This is a classic, well, it's a twist on a classic. So a classic bramble uh, would be creme de meur, which is uh, blackberry liqueur, some gin, and some lemon. Uh, but we've just switched up a bit and tried to make it our own a bit. So using a lovely classic dry London gin, uh, this, is, this came out in 2015 as well. It's Bombay Star. It looks very similar to a Bombay Sapphire, but it's sort of like the big daddy. Uh, so in 2015, the craft gin world exploded. Uh, I was actually lucky enough to be part of the imbibe tasting panel that tried about 35 different gins that literally all came out last year. So just in the spec of how many gins are actually being made, because you don't need to age it. Effectively, if you've got a still and you get a license, you can do it. So I'd be surprised out of those 35 if more than 20 of them are still in existence now, and that's not even a full year on. But that's how vicious the market is for gin. So I'm going to use this lovely star of Bombay. Then after that, we're going to be using some Chambord. So Chambord is a uh, raspberry liqueur uh, from France, or black raspberry liqueur, and it's uh, with vanilla and honey. Uh, it's very similar to Frambois or Creme de Cassis, but slightly more character. And we've added even more character into it because we've mulled it. We actually you know mulled red, mulled red wine, you sort of get them from dodgy pubs, and nobody really knows why they like them, but you drink it anyway. Well, we made it pretty banging with some Chambord as well added in. So this usually would be served um, in a syringe, uh, just, as, just on the side of the drink to be able to try afterwards. Uh, but you guys have actually got syringes going out now. That's the entire drink just sort of sucked up, just so you guys know. So please do share that. So next is some maraschino, uh, which is a... Cherry, sweet cherry liqueur. This is actually the original maraschino. Um, it uh, was the original family in Italy who actually started making it. There's lots of different variations, but this one we like to use. So then we have some lemon juice. And some plum bitters. 
So that's my drink done. Yet again, Dave is quite slow, but it's okay, he'll get there. Um, so Dave is making a dovetail margarita. So it's actually a bit of a play on words. So many classic tequila drinks would be a margarita, uh, frozen margarita as well, and then a paloma. So a paloma is a sort of a brunchy drink that's really coming into on trend in, in America. Instead of Bloody Marys, you can have a paloma. So it's pink grapefruit, soda, tequila, and a little bit of agave syrup. Uh, we try to switch it up a bit and make it a bit more citrusy. Then also, um, a paloma translated also means dovetail, so that's why we call it a dovetail margarita. Uh, Dave is using El Himidor Reposado tequila here, which is uh, actually the first 100% agave tequila to come into Europe. It was literally the first tequila to stop people, well, to this day they still do, shot, line of salt, and some lemon. If you have a nice tequila, you don't have to do that, and these were the first guys to do it. Reposado means that it's been aged in a barrel between six and 18 months, um, and it's made in a place called Casa Herradura, and they actually invented the term Reposado and the category, which many, many bartenders know today, which I think is pretty impressive, so that's why we like using it. Uh, then he's also using some citrus aid, which is um, we make in, make in house because we like doing fresh juices on weekends. Effectively, it is all the skins of any citrus you can think of, from clementine, orange, lemon, lime, and we sort of just put that down in some sugar and some water, and then add in loads of, cit uh, so, uh, loads of soda. So obviously, it's quite bitter, but it's a very nice citrus kick as well. He's also got some passion fruit seeds in there as well. Dave, if you wouldn't mind icing me up. Dave and I are going to do a cringy double shake now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, that one person. So that is how it's served at the bar. Blackberry on a skewer, and shambled, mulled shambled in a syringe, and Dave's Dovetail Margarita as well. Thank you, guys. Just to finish off in conclusion, effectively, as you've seen, as we tried to show today, we think drink trends are vegetal, are savory, uh, and assert Food pairings as well is a very big thing because classically wine is what you're thinking when you're doing it. But if you go to the right bar, you can definitely have a lovely food paired drink with whatever you're having. Uh, saying that, there's been a huge increase uh, this year in Prosecco. Uh, it has just exploded on the UK market and is now actually bigger than champagne. Um, so much so that the cures are to sort of change it up just a little bit for like a GP sort of increase in loads of different bars have exploded. So Shamble, what we talked about earlier, um, for example, this year has actually overtaken sales over beef eater gin, which is pretty impressive as it is just a little liqueur in comparison to an entire category of gin. Also low ABV drinks are supposedly on trend, people sort of say quite a lot, that a, a, a less alcoholic drink is what people are looking for. In our experience at working in bars, that's not really the case. If you're going to go to a cocktail bar, you kind of want a real drink. You don't want to be that person asking for a 4% drink. Or, you know what else exists? A beer. So that's why that exists. But that's pretty much what we think. Trends are nostalgic. They take you to another place or exciting ingredients that you've never tried before. Thank you very much. We've been Salt to the Earth.